So welcome everyone to the special um, select board meeting to discuss the Russell Street School. Um, we are, it is November 8th, 8th thank you, um, and we're going to convene the meeting here and walk over to the Russell Street School um, with folks here. And is Tim here? Well, Tim, she is. Yeah. Okay. I just saw him. I thought. Yeah, he's just checking something on his computer. Okay. Um, and is Mike coming? Mike's right now? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Um, I thought maybe he was. But anyway, um, so we'll convene here. We'll walk over there and um, end the meeting um, over at Russell Street. In the meantime, I have one two announcements two. anyway that I forgot to do last night. I don't know. I get into the obituaries and I forget about the other things going on. Uh, third annual vendor fair hosted by the Hadley Mothers Club. Local crafters and vendors featuring holiday ornaments, home decorations, jewelry, candies, handbags, quilts, dolls, clothes, <clears throat> soaps, baby products, makeup, Polish pottery, and much more. Full lunch menu, the Mercy Blood Mobile will be there from 9 to 1, food pantry collection. A silent auction bid on more than 40 items donated by local businesses and vendors. And this is at Hopkins Academy, Route 9, November 17th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And for more information, you can call 413-427-4169. And then they were doing a, a relief. It's kind of a little late notice, but if anybody had anything they wanted to bring down to Town Hall, <laughs> to the Collector's Office or to the Treasurer's Office, um, they were collecting things for the uh, to be sent to Staten Island. Uh, blankets, warm clothing, underwear, socks, flashlight, batteries, hygiene items, non-perishable snacks, bottled water um, for anyone that wants to donate. All right, thank you till 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, let's head over to the I'm Ken Dan Ford, the director. This is Captain Gabron, the program director. Ellen Moore, Bernard Operations Manager, Gary Bernard, President of our Board of Directors. And we can, you can uh, ask any of us, but um, we thought we'd just walk you through real quick and then I, I, I'm not sure who to defer to. Who did? Um, you, Gloria? Gloria is in charge. Yeah. So um, you can set the agenda. I, don't, you I also know. wanted to, where's Tim? Oh, there you are. I didn't see him, but he didn't come. Um, if you could, as we walk through, sort of guide us as a building inspector to what you commented on in, in the memo. Okay. Oh, so that would be great. So I think we're going to end up back, back here, here to here. sit down and chat. Yep. Right? And so this will be like a two minute or, you know, five minute quick walk. Is that okay. okay? Would you like to narrate or should I narrate? Yeah, right. I'm doing great. Yeah, okay. This is our common room. This is the main uh, sitting business area. Catherine's desk over here. And this is where. Nice. Social has like my kids work here, so it's nice to see. Yes. Yeah. 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 So we'll do a little like, what is this used yeah. for, oh, okay. and then we'll do a, what are the issues? Okay. Oh, in each room. Well, room by room. Okay. So, so this room is. The, the common room, it's the social space, right? When people aren't in classes and tutors and meeting with advisors, they're in here and they're playing, they're talking to each other. You know, there's a staff desk here, there's food. We have a um, you know, little corner for food there. We don't have a kitchen, of course, but um, it's music and games and, and, and socializing in this room. And, and sometimes more serious meetings, but that's How usually elsewhere. Have? We have about 55 members right now. Yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, without going elaborating too much, you know, we're not actually a school. We're an alternative right. to school that supports independent yes. learning. And so some kids come, uh, most kids come here two or three days a week. Some teens come here four days a week. Some only come one day a week. Mm -hmm. And when they're here, they can be, we have a whole range of classes. and two, we, have, we have packets for all the select board members and a couple extras, I'm sure, if there's other interested people. But um, so it's, a, it's trying to create a structure here that supports independent learning outside of school for any team who wants to do that, right? And so there's a lot of advisory and a lot of uh, consulting with parents and, and is this really the life you want to have? And, and, so, um, and so being here is a range, it's like being in a community center or a club. And so there's classes, writing groups and history groups, all kinds of things happening throughout the day and one-on-one -on -one tutoring and, and these advisory and mentoring things going on. But when a teen isn't doing any of those things, they can be here. So. One of the things that we've been working with North Star on, one of the issues that we keep on bringing up and it's been in the violation notices, 
is the type of furniture, unfortunately. And we understand the need for them to have an alternative method of teaching, but unfortunately the code does not permit this type of furniture. You have it in your house, but it's not allowed in a commercial building. Uh, there are very strict standards on that. These, they're supposed to have what we call the California tags. The California is the most strict of all uh, states with regard to interior finishes. This stuff is highly combustible. Uh, it's a lot of foam. It's not a treated type of foam. So it is something that we keep on bringing up, but it is an internal thing to the building that, that, that uh, we've been working with them on. Uh, we do allow them to treat it, but the problem with treating it is it's gotten to be an extent, a very expensive method to uh, go through, get a sample, have it sent out to the lab and whatnot. Um, but it has been a problematic issue. So st structurally, can I ask a question before you go? Yeah. So structurally with this space. Before we move on to the next thing. So Tim knows this and we've been in communication about it a lot, but just for the record, we spray all the furniture with a fire retardant mm -hmm. once a month. Mm -hmm. right. um, so everything, you know, ideally what we, what we would be doing is sending out swatches of the fabric to be tested and brought back and that's really what the fire marshal would love us to do. It's prohibitively expensive. Mm -hmm. So we are spraying um, to keep it as safe we as possible. We have eliminated several overstuffed and over upholstered furniture right. items. And at this point, any new furniture we take in, we request that it be up to California code. And so structurally with this room, Tim, is there anything? No, there's nothing, I would say, structurally inadequate with this room. You, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't have the greatest heating system, doesn't have the greatest uh, uh, electrical system. Uh, they pushed everything over in the corner there. Uh, we've had had some issues. They've, they've dealt with those, mm -hmm. but it, it's just a constant problem with an older building. Yeah, and, and that is uh, a violation because this room is not wired for uh, refrigerators and microwaves and coffee pots and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So therefore, uh, the wiring is not what it should be mm -hmm. for that little corner. Well, we, did have, yeah, we did have an extra box put in. Um, yeah, a couple extra I think, boxes. I think through your company did it. Uh, for us, and so that it would be safe to have yeah, those things plugged in. Everything is directly plugged into the walls. You had that, power you had that wired? We had yeah, that wired. Your we company? Had, I, yeah. I don't have a company. Oh, I've been retired for six years. It's his daughter's company. Oh, oh. Okay. At any rate, we have had new boxes put in okay. for all the appliances. Right. It's, 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 um, the wiring has been brought up yeah. to this point. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But right. No, this is one of the nicer ones. Okay, so yep. let's go on. that's going to come in here at 7 o'clock tonight, and this is visitor, and, uh, and more dancers and others are here. So this room is empty on purpose so that physical activities can happen here. Okay. Tim. It's right here. Oh, <laughs> why do I keep losing you? I'm losing him, Gloria. <laughs> Tim. <laughs> One of the items we're working with North Star on are the, the mirrors. To, under code, these are not permitted. Um, they're a safety hazard. Uh, they, they're they loose. Uh, this is standard glass that you'd have in your house, not permitted in, a, in this type of environment. When you say um, you're working with North Star? Yeah, it's, on, it's been on the list. Okay, this is brand new to us. Well, it's been on the list from day one. Okay. The mirror, the mirror should go away. 
The mirrors can easily go away. They're here. They can be away tomorrow. Use them. There's a flamenco class that meets here, and she asked if she could install them. We're happy to let them go. Yeah. I'm sorry I missed it on anything that it's was written. All the violations. Because um, that's the first. That's the first time. Okay. But we're happy to tell the flamenco group that sorry you can't have mirrors. It's easy, easily remedied. Yeah. That can be done tomorrow. That be great. Right. Uh, when, when we talk about the heating system and the problems with the pipes, this is the heating system that we have in the school. And these pipes, uh, over a period of time, will start flaking inside, causing problems with the burners. And some of the pipes have been replaced in some of the rooms. But when we talk about the pipe, the heating system, this is the heating system which is now outdated and causes a problem with the boilers. So when we get to that segment, you'll know what we're talking about with the heating system. And this is what's in every room. One of the items that um, North Star knows about, we've always known for a long, long time, is the condition of the bathrooms. They're, they're very substandard. Uh, the size of the stalls don't meet requirements of today's codes. Uh, certainly not accessible. The floors in very poor shape. Uh, I mean, they've tried to keep up with it, but it's just a very, very old and aged bathroom. Uh, in back of us is the west entrance and exit, which is not being used by them anymore. The, the portico outside is in very poor shape. It's very rough. The, um, we're very concerned about the maintenance of this and the uh, how. how bad shape it is right now. It is something that uh, we've talked about and, and it's going to be addressed by both North Star and the town. Uh, we're going to put something in, on the door to try to make sure that everybody realizes this is an unsafe exit. We're going to put a fence around the outside to keep secure so people can't get up the steps. It's actually pulling away from the building as we speak. It's been doing that for a number of years, for as long as I've been here. Um, and it's a real concern that at some point that it can collapse on us. But, you know, can we take when that's going to happen? No. But it, it, it's been neglected for, for quite some time. I was that when we moved in, it was with the agreement not to use this door or the, the one facing Route 9. And we've never used them. From day one, we've only used that door. These had emergency exit only signs on them. They still do. Uh, and, and no one uses these doors um, ever. And we never have from day one. And in the bathroom, Tim certainly knows the building better than any of us. We did remodel the front bathroom when we moved in here six years ago. So that one is, is would be up to code. There's one That's unisex right. bathroom. It's that's, a very nice shape. Yeah. That's in good shape and modern. We, we we paid for that. And we did that ourselves when we moved in. But the other the, the other ones, yeah. Bathrooms are this one and the one downstairs is, is even worse. Nineteenth century bathroom. Uh, yeah. Right, right. So well, there, there is one functionally modern. Any type of structure like this that has this type of use is required to have two means of egress, and they have to be up up to code. Uh, we, we, we understand the issues here. Um, this one we're going to shut off. And at least you'll have the front one and the other, the one, the other one on the side there that you use constantly. But the other one, again, we'd like to minimize constant use of that because of the condition of the steps. Right. This, this exit we don't use either. This is the other one that Tim says we're going to keep as a second egress while he blocks that one off. We don't use this one either. We, we really only functionally use that one door. But the point being, the point being second. legally, we need right. And you'll see uh, later on the steps on top of the door. So it's going to be stuck. It's going to be blocked. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. All right. refer to this room as the library for all the books and shelves are here and it's for tutoring and quiet sitting. Tim. 
<laughs> Again, you're going to look at the room. It's going to look nice. Uh, you know, we're, I've been asked about structural issues. The structural issues are not by room. It's going to be by the, the exterior. Uh, it's needed maintenance for quite a long time. It hasn't been repointed. That means the fill in, in the bricks. The roof is leaking. Uh, we, we're very concerned about the, the condition of the roof right now, uh, especially the valleys and, and whatnot. It's deteriorating. Uh, we can only patch it to a certain amount. It's going to be a constant issue. As you can see, certainly not energy efficient windows, but the real concern is going to be roof, brickwork, and especially the foundation. It is, it is moving. It's opening up, it's cracking considerably, and those are issues, serious issues that, that need to be addressed at some time with, the, with this building. Yeah, you come in here, you look at, they've done a great job in making the rooms look nice, but that's the extent of it. We have a bad heating system, we have bad electrical, we have bad plumbing. It's a very old building, it's over 100 years old. And those are our concerns as inspectors, what we look at. Certainly, we, we go look at life safety issues on how the rooms are set up, the, uh, the fire load issues with regard to what's in them. But the primary concern now is not with North Star itself and how it's being utilized, but the building itself is structurally sound for children to be in it. That's really the bottom line. I appreciate it's, you saying that, Tim. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we know it's an old building. We knew it was an old building when we moved in, and, and of course, it needs repairs. Um, we are, you know, I, I feel like we've had a good relationship and working we together on making it as safe as possible. And, you know, so there are things that need to be addressed. And, in the meantime, and we're here. not to be, I will be blunt on this. North, North Star is not really all the issues here. North, it's, it's been the problem with more of the subletters have been our issues with regard to what's been done in the basement. <clears throat> These things that we constantly point out, you're going, we're going to point them out in a lot of different er um, the buildings, oh. the furniture and stuff. But what has been our main concern with who's been in here is more than been the suburbs and how it's being utilized with regard to the summer programs. You guys certainly are addressing that now, but that's been a major issue with regard to some control on what they do within the building. You come in here, things are all over the ceilings, hanging all over the place. You've addressed that, but it's always how to get control of that before it happens. And certainly that's being done now, but it's been an ongoing issue every single year, but you certainly you have addressed it. Is the issue the stuff that's in that, the, the, the age of the kids, the egret, like what is the issue? It's been both. It's been what the subletters have been bringing in uh, with regard to how they set up, the, um, the improper egress of the areas that they use, and especially in the basement, the age group of some of the uh, People have been in there. They've been there very, very young. We never, even when we had this as a school, we never allowed the children down there. Um, it, it was a constant issue because of what's down there. Yeah. Um, one summer, or two summers, we went to a to an art camp, and they had a lot of cardboard and art supplies. That was a, and you gotta get stuck with it. Right, so we don't rent to them anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but un unfortunately, a lot of things happen after the fact. You know, the arts program wants to use a building. Seems like a good idea. Oops, there's too much paper and, uh, and debris set up. It looked lovely. The kids' artwork but was unsafe um, from the building and fire marshal perspective. So we don't rent to them anymore. Um, and that's fine. In the basement, when we moved in, we didn't, we weren't made aware, as, as far as I know, not to use it. The PDPA used it as their cafeteria. Um, there was a, at first we didn't use it, and then the, the water the water department was storing things down there, and they moved out all their water things so that we could use it. So we were working under the assumption that it was a fine thing to use, and it was, you know. And it started off, like everything else, started off small with a couple things being stored down there, maybe a few people getting together, but 
everything morphs over time and then it gets to be an issue. You know, uh, I say it's more of a lack of communication on our part, not being in the loop. You know, we are very, very busy inspectors. We don't have the time to be able to come over at all times. And when we do come over, yeah, we it's more of a, oh my gosh, what's happening? Right, but oh, that's okay. the way things are. Okay, we'll be you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's been um, but again, there's, I see it as two, two issues. The use of the building and how it's being utilized and who's been in here. And the condition of the building. And the, the, the structural integrity of the building. That's a major concern. We see a lot of movement, especially in the stairs right now, in the step, exterior steps. It's a concern of us. What is actually happening? It's going to be a point that we don't want to see a kid trip. And then, then it's a real problem. And that sounds also like, it's not just kids, it's like anybody, that, yes. that you would prefer this building be empty until all these things are addressed. Yeah. Because not, it would be unsafe for adults as well as kids. If the ceilings and the foundations and the doors and stairwells are unsafe, it's unsafe in general for everybody, not just for that's correct. year olds. Yeah, we we if we if the town wants to preserve this building, let's do it right. Let's get 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 it renovated properly. Um, we right. have Roof leaks, what happens with roof leaks? It, you don't see it until the ceiling gets saturated and everything comes down. You, you know, you, you deal with the steps daily, you know. You look at it and say, you know where the trips are. But if somebody else comes in and trips, that's a real problem. They can really seriously get hurt on those. We're very concerned about how those steps are moving around. Right. And they've been moving around a lot lately. Uh, certainly that's been, uh, why is that? We've had some serious type of weather. Uh, a lot of flooding and, and the water table is right here. The outside steps or the outside steps? Yeah. The outside steps. Okay, the, outside the outside steps. steps. They're okay. not code compliant. These days you don't open a door out that opens out, outward and step down right. To, you go right directly to landing. Why? Because people now fall a lot. And you don't, you don't set, you don't make those yeah, steps. years ago, they didn't fall. Right? So, but, and just, and, and backing up one step, we, this, this, all this miscommunication about was the basement available to be used for anything or not, as of January, it's going to be empty. We're not going to go down there. It's just going to be permanently empty. And, and we're, we're all, we've, we've got that. We've made it, right? It was, it's been a long haul, but everybody's going to be out. We thought it was okay to put the art people down there. We were wrong. And we, we miscommunicated. They're leaving. It's over. We're not going to set up shop in the basement. We're not going to take teams down there. The basement's going to be done and over with. And, and all these other things about North Star's use of this building, I think that, uh, that the North Star inspector, the fire inspector, are more or less communicating, finding that our daily use of the building isn't quite as the imminent issue as much as, as, as what Mr. Nahar is suggesting, the other structural things. Yes. We just finish it. We can go down and sit down and have a conversation, right? We can just we'll finish the tour. Mr. Mayor, he's asking if we're leaking. And I say, no, I never put a bucket there. I think those are old stains. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, we totally leaked there. We, we totally leaked there. We them like two weeks ago. Yeah. All right, go for it. We rain in the ceiling about once a year, once every other year. I'm trying to think the last time it happened. This year, though, within the last month, we had our first raining incident of this year. I missed that completely then. Sorry. It was, was minor. Like it was minor, like it was in one, I mean, minor, I say, our experience of it was minor. It was one direct line, one direct The Gary Bird went up. The Gary Bird went up. Yeah, oh, buckets around the, yeah. But it didn't move in the floor. So how bad could it have been? They had buckets that they could have Yeah, it was, it was not a very big leak, and as soon as it happened, we noticed and immediately put a bucket under it, and then he came over and put another pail down while he was Upstairs. looking around. And, yeah, he went into Good. the attic and put a pail under the leak to prevent any more water damage while he was inspecting and patching. And, and then the, roof, the roof had been patched before uh, at one, uh, a few years ago, and uh, those slates up there are so old that they're uh, starting to crack, and they got to be replaced, so they figured it was about 100 uh, slates up there that have to be taken off and replaced because they're just w worn out. And that's what's causing the leak up there. They're all marked on the floor as to uh, where the leaks were so that the roofer could get up there 
and the roof was going up there. Supposedly next week we'll fix it. So more classroom space, interior space. So all we've done is paint. And you guys are peeking here going by. More painting. But we're going to come back this way. So. Did a nice job on the floors. This is a different floor material here. Yeah. Yeah, this one, Dan did his best not to come here, I'll tell you. Dan who? Me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I like it. So we did, we did this floor, yeah. we did this floor, and we went for the carpet and we did the plastic floor. That, that, that's all stuff that we did. Well, by any means, we paid you rent. <laughs> we all work together. But uh, yeah. we were we we have contemplated other floors at times, but we've delayed on that one. So anyway, this is the the office, and there you go. All right, Tim, you guys, anything about ceilings elsewhere here? This obviously the office ceiling has some. Yes, it's just the same all over. You know, if it, if it leaks, it, the ceiling is going to be compromised. I wasn't planning on going up to the attic. Did you want to yeah. take the tour up the attic? No, I don't. thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. It. I don't. We left our coats down. <laughs>
pillar there that's, that's broken loose. And of course, like most town buildings right now, it needs painting. There's more pillar damage here. And here too, you can see the base sliding away. Tim seems to think that it's just a matter of time before this just collapses. So that's why I'm going to get off it while I'm still in one piece. More, another shot of the uneven sidewalk there. Here's some exterior shots of the West Portico. And apparently it's worse than it looks. And you can see a nice hole right there in the masonry. So that wraps it up from here and back to last night's meeting. This Ooh, is like the sun stairs. Huh? The nurse's room. You me. Language, John. The camera's running. This is the computer room. Where's that stairway go? That goes up to the belfry. Oh, huh. Where's the computer room? Right here. We come up here one day and see this built. Look at that, son. It's a good old mess. That's a computer room. <coughs> yeah, see that's the leaks. Huh? They, that's where the roof's leaking. See those marks? Gary put those on the floor where he he puts put the bucket. Bucket, so. Uh, the roofer would know where the leaks are and where to look up there. Where is the structural problem with the roof? It's up, up, but it's up. Um, the chimney up top. It's the chimney. Is it any in the wood structure? No, the wood structure is okay. It looks it looks okay. Yeah. And there's no mortar between the top bricks on the chimney. Oh, yeah, and then amazing. and then the, the like flashing. up there. Is the flashing been fixed up there? I, I know. I think they just finished. Uh, they fixed the one, the, the one we, that blew can off. Can we go around that side? How do you get over there? Yeah, just underneath. go underneath. Uh huh. What is this pipe for? Hello, Paco. <laughs> is is that the furnace, or is that what is that? That uh, probably is the furnace. They got two of them here. Yeah. There must have been right at one mm. time. Must have been. Yeah. Mm. All the sills, they're, they're all... They're, they're not they're too bad, John. No. We went, we keep on going through those and they're all right. But you're starting to see some staining down in here, which we didn't have before. Did you go through and see how solid that wood is? Yeah, we poke at it. Yeah, poke at it with a screwdriver in some yeah. places. You ain't gonna fall through the floor anyway. Uh, no comment. Mm -hmm. No, we're not going to... Uh, you're not get suing me for that one. Yeah. The thing did have some leaks at one time, huh? Yeah. Well, yeah, they, they, like I said, they fixed it a couple years ago because they had to put new... Uh, we do about a hundred a year. Yeah. But we missed it here. Look at all the graffiti and the dates. Walter Zygmunt, 1935 to 36. Yeah. Walter Zygmunt. Is there any asbestos down here, Tim? Tiles, of course. There's tiles. Right, the floor? Tiles are asbestos, yeah. But no, all the... Uh, Pipes have been, yeah, been removed? I think there's one pipe in the uh, boiler room. Uh, 
That's the, still that's the classroom for the... Uh, Are they still in this building? Yeah. Yeah, we know if they are. I thought they said they weren't. They weren't supposed to. Locked. Okay, Willie. Come here, you master <laughs> lock picker. <laughs> that was my fourth grade class. Where? There. In the, in the, where, in the back? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here's the electrical room in here. You gotta see this. Oh. Let me get back here a little bit. And... Is that up the code there, Willie? <laughs> yeah, that's what a good, spaghetti. Uh, yeah, but I mean, mm -hmm. this this is a, what's this box? Aha, that oh. refreshment box. Yeah, <laughs> that's where it, that's where the fifth used to be. <laughs> okay, so we put some beams in here. To short that this was uh, mm -hmm. Tony Calvin did that. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So tell me, Willie, what's so wrong with all these boxes in here? Well, one, they're, they're overloaded. They're doubled up. Some of the breakers are all doubled up and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah. What do you mean by doubled up? Uh, two wires per, per, per two, two wires for these. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean? In the back, they put in two wires per breaker? Yeah, two wires per breaker. They didn't have no more room for any mm -hmm. spares, so they put in extra. Well, is that allowed? No. Then, I mean, who did it? How do you? Uh, we don't know. This one looks like a fairly new one. Yeah, well, they probably had way too many over. Maybe they took, whoever it was, took this, brought some power down to there into here. I don't know. They put wires up there. Hey, look at that wiring. That, that is nice right there. Yeah. I think that's live. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Could very well be. Get a pair of dikes, boy. Check it out. Mm. Say about this? They say you're nuts, get rid of them. <laughs> see, see they're, they're, they're all problems with them, starting to leak and stuff like that. They're beyond mm -hmm. it, their life. Yep. How old are these? Oh god, I have no idea. There it see, this one, this uh, water cut off doesn't work, so you have to put this in there. To, and empty it every morning. Mm. What, what, what's the boiler people? They think that, that those boilers are going to fail this year? Yeah. Well, no. They, uh, well, they've been fixing it for years, and they've been trying to take the, uh, uh, and they keep getting uh, scum out of it, you know, out of the pipes, because the pipes are, are flaking inside. Well, they're rusting. Yeah. Right. So it's coming down through and dipping up the, uh, uh, the controls. And, you know, and all that stuff on the boiler. That's where they're having the problems. Is that? And they recommended that you take those out. What the heck did I did something down here one time? I don't know what it was. And replace it. Was it a beam? I don't know. A long time ago. A long time ago. Said that uh, booster. Well, they have to have that is a, a pulse purge on uh, these boilers. You get that, that starts before the boiler, so it can start sucking and get any fumes out of the boiler. Starts a draft? Draft. You know what I'm talking about. Cool. It's hot in there. Yeah. Uh, Gary Bird mentioned to you that there is a problem that, that needs to be fixed immediately. Yeah, he, he spoke to me today about that. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's do I've got a question. Yes. Okay, and Dan did give us some of them for it. Going forward from right now, what are your concerns? We'd like some predictability about uh, if it's tenable for us to plan on staying here or whether we should be making uh, other arrangements. And it seems that um, you know, our use of the building for us is lovely. We, we really like being here. It's been a very good choice for us to be here. And our work with the town has been 
a boom for North Star. But if it can't be sustained, if it's not sustainable, we need to know so that we can plan and, and you know, really work on whatever campaigns we're going to need to make or searches we're going to need to do or, uh, you know, plan B, C, and D, we're going to have to start generating. And if that's and, the case, and, and if that's yeah. the we need to know how long we yeah. have to move through the grant space. So that, those are the real issues. So we got a letter from Tim, um, our inspector, about uh, the state of the building. Um, and the recommendation in that letter was to... We not. put a date on there oh. of January 1st, but we also stipulated that that is solely up to you and what legally can be worked out. And we understand that there is uh, a tenant in here. Um, but we're at the point that we're very concerned right. about so, the building. And we think the most, the biggest issues really, that could really be a detriment here is the heating system. Okay. So the, what do we do? The question um, that I've asked before, Tim, and that I, I will ask again now is, um, is are you condemning the building? I'm not condemning the building. We talked about that before. And, I to, and uh, Ken and I have talked about that. And I said, I am not going to kick North Star out. If something major happens with the building, I'll be the first one over here putting a condemned sign <coughs> to stay out. Right. But we're not at that point. Right. But we need to look at the future and address some critical issues right. and have some alternative plans for everybody. We, the town is a landlord. We have tenants. Yes. Um, our main concern right now is the heating system. And I told Ken, in my belief, I think the heating system is going to be what will be on the forefront before the inspectors come over and put a sign on the door. So if those, I'm going to speak um, for myself and you all can add in, if this building is not condemned at this moment, we have a tenant here with a lease and, and um, it's my feeling that um, unless that building's condemned, that lease stays in place so I don't see a January 1 date being feasible or, or reasonable for when, a tenant. When does the lease expire? June. 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 It, it's either June 30th, July 1st, <coughs> August 1st, something like that. But, and that's why we came to you guys, the select board, in July right. and what you gave us was a one-year verbal commitment that you'd give us a, a year's notice. Right. And there's a lot of what-ifs, so I mean, we should talk about that. So what if the <coughs> system goes? and then it's not a habitable building. We don't have the funding probably to fix that right now, and so what then? I mean, that is a contingency you should make regardless of what happens, right? Because, you know, but that's a what if. That doesn't, that, I don't think that's a shut the building down now because it might. But you're um, saying if the heat were to go, yep. we'd just be cold. Um, well, we wouldn't be allowed in. So that's, that's we would have to, of course. Right. That, I mean that that is our concern. I mean that, that and that's a huge concern. Right. Yeah, we have a revolving fund which was approved by unanimous vote of the town meeting that uh, that the rental proceeds go are invested back into right. the building. Uh, should the boilers go down for whatever reason, that would be the first thing that we would do is look at. What was the problem, and can we address it with the accumulated money that we have from of course. the rental income? That was our understanding. Yes, of course. I don't mean like yeah. hands off totally, but, but if it's outside of that dollar amount, right? Mm -hmm. um, like, what is that? The recommendation is if the boilers go down, this, you're going to have to take all these pumps out and redo the boilers downstairs. If you put the boilers downstairs, it would make sense to change it to the gas. Now, put gas boilers down there and then change the heating systems up here because these pipes are what's causing a lot of the problems with the furnaces downstairs because they're plugging up and the controls are plugging up. And Bay State has told us couple times and I talked to Dick the owner he says well he said those pipes he says we changed a few of them but they're going to have to be changed so if a furnace goes down and we have to change the furnace then we're going to have to change all the piping in here too and he says you're three figures hundred plus 
So, you know, to do that, and then well, in order for efficiency, we should get gas, because we can get gas in the building for nothing. But then so we, so well, to say that if the, if the, if the huh? heating system breaks, we that's have, a, we have something to figure no. out, right? I and mean, that's, <laughs> you have to know that. You have, you know, like, we have to figure it out. Um, but, but I don't. We you're can't. not going to do that overnight. That's the issue. You can't change that whole, this whole heating system overnight. Yeah, it's a huge it's problem. Major. It's a major job. And like Willie says, you know, what's causing the breakdowns? It's the inside of the degradation of the pipes. If we do remodel, put in a new heating system that we put in to uh, accept these rooms as they are. How long is this going to stay at school, or is it down the road when these people decide they a little bit bigger and they need a bigger place or a smaller place? They move out and we just uh, reheated, replumbed, and reheated the whole building for this setup here, and now we're going to change it to make offices. Now we're going to tear the whole system out. But that, those are good. those things can happen at any point. We could be offices and then change to a theater space, like. We well, just got to, like, I, I you know, I understand right. that that's part of our bigger plan, but that's I don't think that is why we're here right now. Thank you. Do you find this place uh, good for your needs? Absolutely. Absolutely. Safe place for your kids? You don't feel like these kids are in danger at all? I bring uh, my three-year-old and my ten-month-old to work with me regularly. I, I think Tim is pointing out real structural problems. Yeah. I don't think right. he's, I mean, what he's saying is obviously true, right? Do I, I don't feel like I'm about to trip. I don't feel like the ceiling tile is going to fall on me. I, you know, the electrical, I'm not, we don't have any electrical problems on a daily basis. We don't have any heating problems or plumbing problems on a daily basis. The, the, the bathrooms are old, right. right? We made one new, right? We've discussed, should we remodel the second bathroom and how much money would that cost North Star to put into it? So we're not doing that, right? Um, I don't like going down to the boys' bathroom in the basement, personally. I don't think anybody here really would enjoy <laughs> doing that. But, you know, they function. Um, Yes. In other words, yes, I feel perfectly safe. Uh, I don't think I'm endangering anybody uh, separately. Like, if the building is... Yeah, I feel... Let me stop there. I think we understand each other. I think we can do this way. Um, it's, it seems to me that... Um, one question is, what does the town see as the future of this building? Mm -hmm. That's a big question. Yeah. And I know that's a big question. <laughs> Answer it tonight either. That's what we're trying it could be obvious. But I think it's yeah. I think it's I I, I think that sooner or later, um, North Star's probably going to have to find other space because if you do renovate the building, then you're going to use it for something else probably. You know. So so the big question for for me is as the president of the board is, um, you know, we, we need time to do that. We need we need time to find right space. We need time to look around, and so. If, if, if we can um, be guaranteed of a certain amount, of, or enough time, you know, to, to really do search properly and find the right space. Um, Which, let's program. clarify what Gary just said in that statement, is that this is like our ideal space. Well, this is great space. Yeah, so it's, great it's space. not about our trying, you know, it's not about us expanding and, you know, we have a long-term vision. Our long-term vision would be happily served staying here. But if Hadley's long-term vision is not enmeshed with that, then, or if, you know, the functionality of the furnace is not the building, you know. Sure. And we're in the middle so. of that discussion, right? right? Um, so I, just, I also want to say, and again, I'm speaking for me, not necessarily on behalf of the board, because you all can chime in. Um, I, think it's, I think it's a great um, addition to the town to have another building here. Um, and so I don't have an issue, any issue with that at all. Um, we want to have a space, safe space for you to have. Um, and that has been my concern all along. Is this condemnable? Are you at risk? And if that was yes, and then we need to find space now. Um, and if it's no, not in the immediate moment, then we have a lease with you. Is, I don't know if this is an appropriate question. But that's <laughs> never stopped me before. <laughs> You've heard from Mr. Danielko about what if, if the boilers went and all that. What if, what if this place came up for sale? Would you actively pursue? What if, it's what if? I, I think it's probably beyond our capacity to fundraise for all the repairs that, that you're pointing out. I don't think that, if we were going to rate, I don't, I, I, I think, 
What Tim, Tim, what did you tell me? <laughs> what kind of numbers are we talking about here? Well, you know, we look at we have to look at it with prevailing wage. I mean, I've given some estimates to the selectmen uh, off the top of my head, and I've always people have asked me that. What do I think it would cost structurally to get this back into suitable conditions? Three to four million, based on um, right. our prices. Right. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean your if it's your prices, right. Right. especially like the cornice. Um, when that was redone, it was done with a less than a third of what our estimated costs were. That's based on prevailing wage, and the and who <coughs> who was willing to do it. Right. I think there's a lot of what ifs there, and so much depends on what you want. So if you wanted to sell this property, Walmart probably would pay you more than most are ever paid. Right. But if Hadley wants to maintain and historic landscape, they would pay you more than you would have to pay for the property. Right. So it depends on what you want. We can afford it, but we're all talking we have, about, you know, it's, well, a, it's a nice building. You know, it's right. a nice building. It has to set it down. It's been here for a long time, so it would be nice to be able to uh, repair it and maintain it. You know, we are dealing like, with what it's to look. But it's a question to be asked of the town yeah, as a exactly whole. Right. Do the town people want We to have been to trying to get those people to answer us. <laughs> they have not have, answered us. It might point. have to be oh, to a, um, Thank you. a vote. It might have to help you out. Yeah, a paper vote like we've done in the past. But at the same time, we yeah. have um, a structural um, study going on from an outside um, company. We have a historical um, a study going on about our buildings in town. And we've had a couple of open meetings about that. So we're in this process. And it leaves you in an, a little bit of an awkward place. Of, Every time you read in the paper, oh, God, they're oh talking gosh. about it again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. David, you had your hand. Yeah, I just want to chime in. Um, I think it's a great building, personally. Um, I look on eBay occasionally for Hadley stuff, and there's probably more images of this building than any other structure or place in Hadley. So, it's, you know, there's some historical significance here, and it's just a nice building. Walking around, I feel it. Uh, looking at it from the outside, I feel it. Uh, I, I feel it's a story of neglect here. We haven't done, I'm not saying we've been slumlords maybe half a step up or two from that. But um, obviously we haven't been maintaining the building as we might. We've been in a reactive mode. That's due to finances, it's due to management, whatever. So now, as Gloria just said, we've got a couple studies going. Attention is being paid. I would say it's on everybody's front burner, one of our front burners. So I think it's going to be a good time to come up with the kind of answers we need about the real costs, the real structural issues, pretty soon, over the next few months. So I love having you here. I see synergies between you and the Hopkins Academy, you know, the, the public schools. I see them benefiting from you being here over the years with maybe more arts programming that they can offer. Maybe you can be t uh, letting your kids take, I don't know, I just see that your location and your mission is matched to other institutions in town like the Hadley Public Schools and there's much uh, contact, I understand, yet. So there's a great future here, I think, education-based future. Um, if you guys grow, we can charge you more rent, you know. <laughs> Or if you find partners to come in here that are, have similar missions, or if we need to park uh, town, you know, some town office here, you know, there's going to be lots of uh, options, I think, if we can get the building in good shape. What I'm going to comment is, I'm sorry if I'm taking too long, is I don't think we should wait until um, something goes wrong. I don't like this reactive mode stuff. That's slumlord thinking. So um, Joy said you're, you say we're waiting to hear from the town. I'm, I'm not sure we've really brought the future of this building to the town yet. If we have, I'm not aware of it. So we got to do that maybe in, at the Where next town meeting. Where are you at that meeting? We talked about buildings. I don't know what you're uh, that was the building. town employees coming asking what's going on. The basement of the senior center meeting? It was a public forum. No. Yes, it was a public forum right. about town buildings. Right. So there wasn't one single person there that didn't work for the and that's town meeting one. So that's not our fault. True, How many people and viewed this building? Well, my point is that, um, um, that ended up being, I thought, almost everybody there was public, you know, our colleagues, our um, fellow town. Did workers. you go knocking on any doors to ask people stopped. if they wanted to come to the meeting? Absolutely. Because because we George, had it, we George, had it. Excuse me. All right. You know, it's, it's but, stop the bullying, okay? Well, I'm not doing any bullying, yeah, David, no, but you're right. saying mismanagement and yes. I have to I'll blame myself as well and I, I want to say this that we're not mismanaging we haven't had any money in the budget to um, do any repairs on buildings until the CPA that, you know, money came through the bank it's hard to say you don't have any money 
That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say... No, you have money and others I'm don't. I'm hoping that we're on a uh, mode now with our studies that are being done you don't. to figure out what we can afford, what's recommended. We have independent people looking at the structure, see what they agree on. So I think we're finally getting our act together to get the information we need to bring a reasonable plan to the town and get to your answers. I hope you can stay here. I have one last question that I'll shut up. Have you started talking about what, uh, what space you would really need, let's say for a year or even two, to take your classes to other Hadley buildings? I don't know if you need like six classrooms during the day. Could we accommodate you at the Senior Center, North Hadley Hall, I don't know where other schools? Is that discussion started yet or not? Not yet. North words, Hadley Hall. Could we get you out of here for a year or two? Yes. No. I'm just wondering if you've started that conversation. I, or if it makes sense. Oh, please help me. Not, not with the town. Not, not with the town. Maybe it doesn't make sense. But if it does, we should talk. What are we doing? Oh, right. yeah. We're talking certainly amongst ourselves about what, is, what are our options. Well, please consider our building. <coughs> if we can, we, we can't accommodate you or not. But I hate to lose a lieutenant. Uh, Mr. Nixon, are we going to be fixing the roof here? Yes, we've uh, hired uh, J.D. Rivet to come in and fix the roof. They're going to be meeting with us uh, next week, and the uh, work is expected to take five days. So we are we are actively uh, responding to our to their need. Yeah. So it, it's it's uh, a sizable job. A couple of slates. Uh, One hundred slates. A hundred slates. Yep. Yeah. And that's been the case. Uh, right. You know, whenever there's a, there's been. You know, minor issues. Right. Um, Gary, the, the Billings maintenance guy, comes over and, right. and deals with it right away. It's been, you know, I understand. I understand what Tim's saying in the, the larger structural right. issues like the portico and so forth, um, having been dealt with and need to be dealt with right. at some point. But our, our short term yeah, minor yeah. issues have been dealt with quickly every time. Thank you. Yeah, I read his report, <coughs> his report, and I can't understand how everybody's looking the other way and saying. We have all these deficiencies, and are we waiting for someone to get hurt? Because they're not going to go after North Star. They're going to come after the town of Hadley. I'm a taxpayer in the town of Hadley. If this building's unsafe and a child could get hurt in it, they should not be here. And, John, we have a building inspector. We're asking if that is the case, and he is saying no. If there isn't a violation now, and if that violation is not fixed, that violation is standing. That could that's standing. But that could happen at any public building that we have. We're even talking about we, this one. Even in the school, we could we could get sued if some somebody falls and gets hurt. You know, that's just the fact that we have. And we have deficiencies face. in every one of them. They members. put it in writing. And there's more here. We have a lot on the outside, sidewalks, steps. Are, are things still going on in North Hadley Hall? Yep, we know about those deficiencies too. I appreciate you saying this that. Is especially that, you know. This is a big issue, and I know that there's a lot going on in Hadley politics, and the and we have the Gazette here reporting to the Pioneer Valley about it. Um, but that's been a Go ben. you know it comes to me when people br you know bring it up with me constantly everywhere I go. People go, oh, I'm so sorry, um, and I go, yeah, you know, and Hadley has other buildings. This is not the only one, and certainly the north. The North Every single one of our buildings. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Are we, and, and, so and, and further, other than apologizing, people uh, sometimes are accusatory that we are endangering other people's children for our benefit. And uh, that's a hard thing to, 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 to cope with. But you just said that we respond to. to I'm saying the, the way that this is being played in the paper, where North Star is being sing this building is being singled out of all the buildings, and that we right. as tenant are being singled out by the lead editorial of the Gazette makes us privately face criticism or skepticism or doubt. Not by the town, I'm saying that the public perception of our program and our, our integrity mm -hmm. is being challenged. And the by the building, public again, perception. the building has issues and no. other buildings have issues. Right. You know, I think there was just a surprise about like why this building. And I, you know, maybe part of it is that there's such an emotional attachment to this building in Hadley. It's very visible, the North Hadley is maybe less visible publicly. So may I say that I hope that um, we get the schedule from our consultants once they're hired. Um, we're all um, aware of when their reports are coming in, that we try to do a much better job um, having a public discussion or two um, about the, those findings and what our options are. Okay. And but you it, guys can help with that. We but it doesn't, it doesn't answer the question on whether we tell these people to start looking for another building or not. 
you know, and that's well, that's big that's yeah. the big question. Well, and, I, and I'm hearing we should be looking for a backup temporary plan for the winter, no matter what. I'm hearing that clearly. I've heard it already, and I'm hearing it again. Well, it's but, either. But, but also, so our lease is up in June or July, summer, and we are operating with a verbal idea that we'll go year to year with the select board uh, for the following year and persisting after that. But and as long as the building's not condemned, I'm hearing some indication that that's something that so, you may want to do. We're not signing anything now, but, right. but uh, and if, so we need to be thinking obviously about like September and nine months from now, where are we going to be operating, right? And um, oh, we, have a, we have a verbal commitment that we'll probably still be here, but not a, not a definite, no, no contract, there's nothing, right? So you, you could change your mind. And, and we, and we could, you can change your mind any time in the coming six months, right. and we will have three months then to figure out where we're going to be in September. Right. Correct. And that would be very difficult for us, right. which is why we came to you in July and why we're here tonight right. to be like, do you think we're really going to be able to be here in September right. if we need to be here or not? And that would be really helpful to hear. Right. So, Tim, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I think it's one thing I have to um, address. Uh, we've, we've talked about condemnation of the building and being safe. They're to totally different things. Don't think that since I'm telling you I'm not going to condemn the building, I'm not saying it's unsafe for the kids. There are unsafe things in here, and we have to be apprised of those things. Look at this, the uh, sidewalks outside. They're in horrible shape. The steps are in horrible shape. Are those unsafe issues? Yes, they are. Even the way this building is laid out is unsafe. Why? We got our kids out of here. Why? Because of the way this building is laid out. We don't design buildings like this anymore. We don't design stairs the way they are here. Those things, in my opinion, are unsafe. If there was ever a fire in here, we don't have the safety fire uh, safety things that we've built into our newer buildings. And you've seen that over the years that that we're not the only ones that have gotten our kids out of here. And there's a difference between children and adolescents and adults. Adults can be in a building to a certain extent in a, something like this in a controlled environment because they have enough sense to react quickly without being told what to do. So when you say, yeah, I'm not going to condemn it, I condemn a building when something structurally falls down. But to say that it's still safe, it's still unsafe. And I think you, that, you know, we, we have that fundamental issue. I would hate to see children stay in this building consistently because someday something's going to happen. So do you, and it's going to be a major problem. Can you tell me that this building is, is any different than North Hadley Hall where children are in there for, for programs uh, in terms and of we've safety? We've told you we don't want to see the children in North, in North Hadley Hall either. Because why? You have an assembly hall on the second floor. We don't design buildings like that anymore. We put assemblies on the first floor. Why? It's safer. It's easier to get kids out. You have two means of egress in North Hadley Hall. One goes through a whole m m uh, set of stairs and a, s a very narrow hallway to, to, to another set of uh, a porch that really isn't uh, set up nicely. That's as safe as one could be in a modern building. Right. I would, I, we've always had these concerns. Right. Again, it's just like what's happened in this building. We, we kept everybody out of there. <laughs> and then the, the, the pressure was put on. Well, we got to use it somehow. Okay, you start off small with this, this assembly here or this group of people. Then it just morphs. It explodes into everything under the sun, and that's what happens. But once you, but once you close off a building, you it's done. It should be done. But you haven't closed it off. No, no, no. Once, I mean, once you close it. it off, even if it's in. Good change. And it's, then it, it goes, it, it is deteriorates fast. Really fast. If you keep somebody in it, using it, you can keep the thing afloat for a while. But we're at the point in this building, and we have, we've neglected it long enough, and you have a fundamental decision to make. Are we going to save it? 
if we if the people in this town want to save it then we have to come up with some money to save it and if we're putting that much money into it are we still going to be landlords can we use it for ourselves i would certainly say that there's enough need in this town that we use it properly and efficiently for our needs and we have some really good ideas that have been going on and on and on about what to do with all of our buildings we have to start that process sooner than later we have to get these buildings up to par we're going to lose all of them yes i agree with that agree so with that. The, the message i'm getting is that um north star needs to start looking um that sounds pretty clear um, there are some issues with the building, um, and they they may take precedence. I mean, they may they may something might happen that you know nobody can control. We hope not. Mm -hmm. What I'm concerned about as president of the North Star Board is is that we have enough time to find some good space. That's really important because we can't just. You know, we don't want to be thrown out into the street. We don't want to try to cram ourselves into a space that's too small or that's unsafe. You know, we want to find, if, if we need to start looking, okay, we've got that message, but we need some time. And we need to know that we've got another year here or something so that we can really start doing this right and doing it properly. So that's my major concern. I would like to make a motion that, um much to my regret because I think you've done a wonderful job with this building to see that it's been used in this in this thing but being fair to you and to whatever I'd like to make a motion that you start to find another place mm -hmm. to move to uh, within finish out the lease and maybe by the end of you know in September I don't know if that's possible could we see what you know at least we're giving you fair notice at this point it's November um, doesn't give you a whole lot of time, but right, because we'd have to be operational mm -hmm. by September, or we would lose. Yeah, a huge, huge portion of our budget. Um, we maybe we could do something to, you know, help you at that point with, okay. with other except, things. Except, but except I think that this building needs to be shut down when at the end of your school season. That would see, the, and of course that would break even if we don't have a problem with the uh, boilers downstairs. Well, we'll, have to, right. so we'll, we'll have to deal with that as it comes along at this point. It's not fair That's to correct. kick if, them if, out at this point. No, if, and if, I would also like to add to that motion that we close immediately North Hadley Hall to any further yeah. functions up there also. Yeah. Is that a second to that motion? No. Okay. Let's do that separately. All right. If, um, that's a tight that's a tight squeeze for us, particularly if any space that we identify needs some renovation, needs some work. Um, uh, I would I would like to think that we could um, negotiate an additional year. So um, and yeah. I was gonna ask I was gonna um, I'm just saying what I was gonna say. Um, I think that I think I'd like to think of your motion as something you need to be thinking about. That that as of this moment, without a study, without um, a more detailed plan, <coughs> that we should think about September. And if we get information that suggests differently, that we would be able to extend that potentially. Um, because the feasibility studies are going to be ongoing at this point. And we have, I think now, a commitment to make decisions about these buildings much quicker than we have been doing. So, um, and that might happen by March, and we could say, okay, we will extend um, right. at that point. But at this moment, if we're we having this decision and this vote right now, yeah. I think we have to um, I, w I wonder if... Uh, if barring a need to condemn the building, barring anything catastrophic, and we said it's 18 months, not six months or eight months that we're out, how do you feel about you? Know, if you understand, this is this is definite, but we have the remainder of this year and one more year to do the search and find the space. Um, with that, with that head in the right direction. If 
Yeah, and, and if with your understanding, if we can eliminate a lot of the subletters that have given you most of the problems, yeah, we'll that's, work on that. I mean, we don't. I, I let let me address that. Um, again, we've talked about this with all of us, and you know, we understand the subletters. I think if we talk about who comes in and what their programs are and how they're setting it up, and sit down with them together and discuss that, there's not a problem with subletters. As far as I'm concerned as an inspector, that's up to the uh, selectmen because they're, they're the controllers of the building. But if we can have an understanding on who might come in this building, I mean, it's, it, to me it's open-ended until something can be addressed. It's fine. So we can. And that's completely different than what that's you just a whole said, different Tim. Thing, Tim. It's totally different than what you just said. But I, but I'm also well, willing to, to to say we're not going to do year to no, year no, to year no, to no, year no, carrying no, on. No 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 no. I'm not talking about that. No. We don't want that For either. the 18 months. Right. I'm talking it's about whatever you guys. Can I'm saying that if we say. I mean this. You got a legal. You got a problem. You got people here. They're going to try to find someplace else. But you're giving them a date. But it might not happen on that date. You know we understand. We're not going to cut them off like that, but if something can, if they're addressing their problem and we're addressing the building and trying to alleviate all the the issues that we've had in the past, if it's if it's January, I mean, if it's if it's June, July, August, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. We're going to the end result that we're trying to get them out. We're trying to deal with this building properly. And they, they, they're controlling who's in this building. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm just gonna say this in order to clarify the record because I'm not, I'm not sure where we are at this point. Um, and just to summarize, we do have a revolving fund. That fund has probably about $40,000 in it which can be used for immediate repairs, boilers, and so forth. Uh, we had a proposal uh, from uh, an architect for the East Portico renovation. Uh, so those bid specs are ready to go and ready to be advertised as soon as we have money and clarity that we're going to do that. We applied uh, to the CPA for $164,000 for the West Portico. Um, the, the historical commission asked that we do that repair until the annual town meeting to give their preservation consultant who you hired last night enough time to review the, the building and I've submitted to you uh, back on October 1st uh, a grant funding uh, proposal for um, raising significant money for building repairs as well as wastewater uh, infrastructure upgrades and water uh, infrastructure upgrades. So um, that's kind of the situation where we are. We have a lot of resources uh, pending, and we have a lot of studies that are pending. Uh, we have to resources now. So, with the discussion about when, when are we going to be asking North Star to move to another place, it sounds like there's a lot of negotiating around here, but I wanted to make sure that that you had that information so that the, the record can be clear as to when are we going to be doing what. Right. My understanding, and maybe this is where your motion came from, is that the building is unsafe and therefore we can't make a commitment beyond where the lease is right now. Is that where you were coming from? Mm -hmm. Is he going to erase all his violations and the wire inspect everybody? That's what I want to know. Or look the other way. What are you going to do with that, Mr. Building Inspector? I'm we're going to do that with every building then, John. No, no, we're, we're talking about this building. It doesn't matter. If we talk about this building, we're going to talk about every building. I thought the meeting was about this building. It is about this building, That's but, what I'm but I'm asking him as well. And and I understand where you're going, but if there are issues with this building, we're going to address all of them, and we're going to close down every every wall until they can be addressed. But I'm, so, can I get an answer from him? Actually, I really prefer not at this moment. I have a question. Um, I know that... Nothing to be decided at this moment. Is a scenario in which the some funding comes through and the porticos, the, the exterior um, stairwells and so forth are repaired while we stay? 
I know you can't say yes, definitely, but is that a possibility? I imagine. I mean, that's going to have to come from the bit. The it seems clear at some point, you know, the building will need to be made handicap accessible, there will need to be an elevator, who knows, other decisions might be made, but those seem to be in the, you know, probably years off in, in reality. But um, the, por the portico, if they were to do that, they'd have to, <coughs> excuse me, they'd have to take the stones off and crib the building. That would make that whole door uh, unaccessible. That's so, the case now. Yeah. Huh? That's the case now. Yeah, well, uh, then they they wanted to work on that one, set that one up. They work on two at a time, uh, depending upon the situation. Now, uh, that means you have two doors that are unaccessible. And according to the contractor, depending upon how the contractor wanted to work it, if he had uh, uh, was to do all three doors uh, at the same time, then you could enter the building. So that's something that would have to be looked at and seen if and when they're going to do it. I know we only have a price on two doors. Uh, the, the, the west and the east, but uh, the uh, what they they want to do and how they want to do it wouldn't make the doors unaccessible. But, uh, you know. Sure, I, I, I understand what you There's a motion on the table. Yes, there's a motion on the table, and I was going to make a, a friendly and well, maybe it's not so friendly. An amendment to that motion um, that we um, let me just think about this for a second that if we are able to address some of the violations with the revolving fund and with some of the plans that we already have in motion, um, that we can go that extra 18 months um, if we're able to do that. Not 18 oh, to, months, 12 months. To July 2014 instead right. of July 2013. Right. But the, th the thing of it is that I want to make, make clear is that, you know, the feasibility studies <coughs> will right. be coming in too. So that will give us a better direction. Right. And really, what we can right. expect of to get done in these buildings, and you know, we're we so really unsure of ourselves right now that it's hard to even know what where to go at this and point. And that's what we really want to be frank about is that we get a feasibility study that says I just don't want to leave you hanging. This building is like it just, you know, it's. Well, and, I would love to have you stay here. <laughs> And then you're stuck in June trying to That's find something for September. I know. So, I know that, so John. I think, I think, I mean, we, we, we get the message. We need to start with it. And, 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 and potentially in March we'll say, hey, it's up to stay Zach over and here. Yeah, we know. <laughs> yeah. Because it is beautiful space. Yes, it's a wonderful yeah, space for the, for, you know, for North Star. But, uh, but, what, but we do need as much, you know, we, Notice. we need as much time yes. as we can have. Absolutely. We're not space. that maneuverable. That's all. Huh? We're not that maneuverable right now. I like what Joyce said uh, at the end here that, um, that we have these studies being done, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I'd like to take a, kind of a positive approach and rather than give a deadline tonight, um, address the specific problems according to what the building and wiring and uh, fire department say um, are the most urgent. If it's um, a portico or a sidewalk, that we really do fence this stuff off. I heard this some weeks ago. Let's get it done. Whatever the current affordable things are, David's um, telling us there's money available. So let's take a positive approach to getting rid of the greatest dangers that we can afford to get rid of. If there's no legal liability right now on our side as the town or the select board, if you know the building's not condemned or whatever, then let's just take care of the safety issues, wait for these studies to come in, meet quickly thereafter, and then assess what the uh, what the, what the deadline should be, whether it's six or 18 months. So I, I guess I'm, a, I'm kind of asking that we don't set a deadline tonight at, of any length, but that we promise to um, address the, the dangers out there and meet soon after these studies come in to see whether we got two years or two days to uh, get them out. Does that make sense, Joyce? Or, uh, yeah, I just don't want to leave these people hanging. Right, right. that's the thing. So, right. you know, so let's get we have that. answers, things that need to be answered, and I didn't want you to not at least keep your ear to the ground to something that might come along or might be out there because that's well, important. Our ears are down down. <laughs> <laughs> They're open. <okay. laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm listening to the beat. I hear you. Are we, are we send my motion? <laughs> okay. Can I ask one other yeah. or make one other suggestion? 
And Tim, I don't know if you could be helpful or if it's even fair to mention this, but um, maybe because I personally like the building. Are there not physical solutions to bringing this thing up to code to be a school for kids? In other words, if it's stairwells, if it's materials, if, if it's fire suppression, it, would it be million? I mean, would it just be unaffordable to bring this up to? It's like anything else. If you throw enough money to anything, it'll, you can do it. I mean, it's it really gets to down to how much money. How much money? It, you know, you're triggering the code compliance. Right. You know, so and you have code compliance on some major design issues. Okay. So I don't want to get into detail, but my, I bring up the comment only because I see um, the demand for your kind of education blowing out there. I see the waiting list at the Chinese Immersion School. I see the frustration with public schools. I see you guys being four times the size you are right now if you had a nice space and uh, you know, for your curriculum, whatever it's going to take. I mean, we certainly have global interest in our program. We're, <laughs> yeah, we we're unique. We just right. had somebody from Brazil well, come really in cool and include us. Really yeah. learning and then they came and spent time town. in Hadley and enjoyed Hadley. I'll find out a second family, nice. but um, I see it being good for some kids, changing their yes. lives. Gloria, I want to ask the building inspector, what triggers off the amount of money that you're piecemealing? So you know, boiler goes, the stairway, you can't piecemeal. You add everything together. Does that not, trigger? Not everything. There does are, that trigger off major rehab? The, not everything will trigger the the a code compliance requirement. Um, a repair of a boiler doesn't. Most, almost all repairs. Replacement. When you get it, roof repair doesn't. Uh, when you talk about replace uh, repair, it doesn't. Mo replacement does. You start adding those figures up, and it's based on the assessed value of the building. When you get to 50 percent of the assessed value within a two-year period, you trigger code compliance on every front. And that's the problem. Our buildings are assessed very well. We low. gotta work real slow. <laughs> um, Joe, they, uh, can I make a motion? That's the problem, it doesn't happen. Um, so can I make a motion that we um, work to um, fix some of the immediate safety concerns that we um, give you till July 2014, barring any major issues that we are unable to deal with yeah. mm -hmm. um, and um, and then we continue to once we have the feasibility once we um, have more forums with the town and get a sense of what is this building can be used for and what it will be used for and if you will be a tenant longer term than that or not happen sooner rather than later so that you have time to that. that's, so that's a long motion but yeah. that's a motion did that make sense? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> makes sense to me. So okay. your motion, uh, Gloria, is uh, July 14 is kind of our current deadline. Yeah. And that we're going to be taking steps to make the immediate repairs as fast as possible. Yeah. That's basically the yeah. I mean, some of the immediate safety issues. And, and I think that you need to know that we are going to take this seriously yeah. and start looking yeah. at it. Yeah. 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 See if we can find alternative space. Yeah. And I, um, I hate to have that happen, but I also think we have to be like Did you have a second? Can I ask another? Well, let's, uh, there is a second. Yeah. Exactly. So maybe, can we do a discussion no. about it? Okay. Do you want to vote? So all in favor of the motion? Yes. David, all in favor of the motion? Aye. Okay. Can I um, ask, is it possible to do some kind of well, I guess it, never mind. That will depend on on the long term vision. But if if, it, if are you able to do some fundraising, hmm. campaign kind of stuff that could help? <coughs> if we find a suitable spot and has us out in in nine months, or in twenty one months, either way, we will be doing fundraising to make that happen, yeah. and that mm -hmm. is in process. That's yeah. the, this We're, is all news yeah. this we, month. Sure. Right. But we, we will be doing that. This is going to happen. Yeah. If we, I, I appreciate the opportunity to take 18 months for us to do this at a, at a reasonable pace as opposed to eight months in a deadline cramped pace that's bound to force us into a potentially negative conclusion. Mm -hmm. um, if we can do it in eight months successfully, then maybe we will. Yeah. Um, but to have the remainder of this year and all of next year to gather our forces, right, right. To, to run a campaign, to search, yeah. and to consider, oh, the thing that we thought we had isn't really that tenable, so we need to change our pace. Um, I think that's plenty of time for us to do something successful. 
it may be that we're so good at it that we're done in six months from now and we're, we're you know, <laughs> yeah. but uh, it, it's nicer to have an opportunity to do that and have it be successful rather than uh, panic. Well, and we need to get the word out mm -hmm. to the general public that you're looking for a space. Maybe somebody will come to you. Certainly, you've told me that you want to stay in Hadley. We want you to stay in Hadley. Um, we're working together, giving you some ideas, and hopefully there will be something that, that pans out with that. Sure, do want to buy it? <laughs> We're not so well, <laughs> The salesman's right next to me here on the couch. Right? I'd love to buy it after you guys fix it up. Do <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to get some public, some public money? Okay. There's a motion, motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and second to adjourn. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Meeting is adjourned.